Hello and welcome to another episode of me painting. Today we're going to be doing a mountainous picture. <laughs> I haven't done a mountain in a while and uh, really felt like painting one. So I got this uh, reference picture which will uh, come up on the screen. <laughs> and uh, also what I've got is a board, a uh, pre primed board with a little bit of black and white gesso to make this grey um, I what I did is I bought a uh, sheet and just had it cut down at my local DIY store so it was all sized ready to go and uh, it's awesome <laughs> so what paints have I got um, I've got I've got two blues and the reason I've got two blues is because I'm going to use them to mix for the sky and also in the areas, the shadow areas of the snow, I could have some blue in there. Uh, I'm tempted to put some red on the palette to warm areas up, but I'm not sure yet. I've got it in, uh, <laughs> my colour's just hidden there, ready. And um, we've got some black, uh, because looking at the picture, the ivory black and uh, probably the burnt umber, which is the also I've got. Probably going to be the mixture of the uh, mountain, so the black and the brown, and then titanium white, of course, because we need titanium white to lighten things up. And that's my selection of colours. It's uh, not many colours. I always try and think when I pick my picture what colours I'm going to need. It's a good idea to do that to, to analyse your picture and think, am I going to need a blue? Am I going to need a red? These are the two things I think of first. Am I going to need a black? Am I going to need a brown? And then, <laughs> then I think a yellow. And my mind automatically goes to yellow ochre. And uh, I think, well, yellow ochre could be enough. Or will I need a cadmium yellow or a cadmium yellow light or lemon hue? Or what do I need? Um, so I like to go through a process like that in my head when I get my reference picture. But anyway, <laughs> let's throw some paint on and see what happens. So I'm just getting a little bit of water. Remember these are artisan oils that I'm using, so you can mix water with them. Uh, if you're using traditional paints, then uh, to mix a thin colour you'd use like some uh, paint thinner or something, just to thin the paint out. And what I'm going to do sort of looking at my camera thinking is it at the right angle <laughs> the face cam I'm not even sure if it's in focus actually I think it's slightly out of focus okay so some white and a bit of water <laughs> I was just messing around with the camera trying to get it focused but I'm not sure if I've got it focused so our picture is on A4, I printed it out on A4 and I laminated it so I can check colours if I wish and um, I'm, not, I'm just going to use it as reference, I'm not going to do the exact same mountain that's on there I think I might make my mountain a bit taller, bring it right up there and when I do mountains <laughs> I think um, about the basic shapes of it like this there's a triangular shape triangle there and then uh, there's these um, areas below they're like squares a kind of something like that blocks you can imagine a square there <laughs> like this look a rectangle I should say and, and uh, you can sort of see see what I mean how they're all like squarish you can sort of put them in and uh, just sort of think about all the different parts of the mountain use use reference or Create your own mountain, it's up to you. 
just going to get rid of the square. <laughs> Don't need a square there. Now, just to show you what you can do to uh, make it easier on yourself, is, is put them in as. I mean, if you're making your own, then you, it's, you can just sort of put them in, can't you? Anyway, we'll we'll mess around with that in a bit. So sort of that can go off there, and then that comes down like that, like that. So we've got a nice big mountain to play with, and then we're gonna have like snow and rocks and stuff here. Yeah, something like that. That'll do for our sketch. We don't need a lot in the sketch. Um, now I'm going to get some of these two blues. Two blues and white. We're going to make our sky colour. So that's ultramarine blue and civilian blue. And you can take it either direction if you want it either more cerulean blue or more ultramarine blue, it's up to you. Or you can try and copy the picture and I, I see that as somewhat like this. This isn't exact, it's about right. I'm not, I'm not going to be too strict with myself been doing a commission recently and the strictness oh have to because the colour's exact <laughs> you do have to be strict with yourself then if you're doing a commission you want to do the best job you can so it's good to be strict isn't it Especially when you get a good result from being strict. Which is what it's all about. Doing a good painting. If you do good paintings, people are happy with them when you, uh, when you give them them. When you sell them. them. You're doing a commission and you go, here's the picture. And they uh, look at it amazed. And then, happy days. You'll probably get another commission. <laughs> Especially if you're doing animal portraits. If you want to uh, make some definite do re mi. <laughs> Animal portraits, you'll be busy all the time. They're kind of fun. Get you started on commissions, that's for sure. I like this blue. It's a little bit lighter. I'm just going to put my finger there. Just to hold this. So it doesn't keep wobbling. What I've done, just so the light I don't get a horrible shadow at the top of my board, which happens if you uh, squeeze the board in between the uh, easel's top and bottom. So what I do is I have got a board on the easel that's squeezed in between, and then uh, I put some masking tape behind the board and stick the board to it. I'll stick it the best I can anyway. Just so I don't get a huge shadow block at the top. So I know some people have said, why don't you just get a good get an easel? I've got an easel. <laughs> it's just for filming I do it like this. Sometimes I use it like this when I'm not filming because I don't get that shadow, you see. <laughs> it's the shadow that's the problem. And the focus on this camera. <laughs> yeah, it'll do. It's not really about me, it's about the painting anyway. 
if I'm out of focus, it doesn't matter. Painting that out of focus. <gasps> that would be a problem. Okay. So, I'm just going to get a bit more of this blue and put in some more ultramabla... Ultramabla... Blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> what I was trying to say is ultramarine blue in there, just so I could do some dark and dark and the blue at the top. And then it gets a bit lighter blue more of the uh, cerulean and white in it as it goes down of course you could do this using the old liquid white and uh, a lot of this messing around you won't need to do <laughs> it's up to you. There's so many different ways to do a painting, isn't there? I'm just showing you one way, just one way that I do now. I'm going to uh, soft, 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 soft brush, using my soft brush to make things soft. Is one thing you get on, on my channel simple instructions <laughs> I have to keep it simple because uh, that's as far as I go <laughs> can't, I can't get too complicated I confuse myself okay so we've got a nice sky in there nice blue sky and what I'm going to do now is think about the mountain. I'm going to sit here for an hour. <laughs> think about what to do now. I'm not. I'm going to get some black. I'm diving in. I'm brown. Black and brown. A touch of that white. Let's see what we've got. Just black and brown. Black and brown. Why just black and brown? Well... I don't want it to be black, I don't want it to be just black so it would be a bit boring for the dark shade. I want it to be a bit warmer black, therefore brown. <laughs> Which when you bring it up to the picture and you do a bit of colour checking by bringing your brush right up to the picture and go, oh, is this, does this match? Is this the right shade? Uh, is it the right um, tone, firstly? Is it the right tone? Is it too light, too dark? That's the thing you want to think about when you're doing your painting. Is it too light? Is it too dark? It's really more important than the tone, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, uh, tone is more important tone is the most important because you want it to be uh, the right brightness I'm not sure if I explained myself right there <laughs> like I said keep it simple keep it simple I can keep it simple I'm alright just thinking of this dark area because I want to put in dark and then put highlights on top. I quite like doing it in that method because then I can see what I'm doing. Um, but just don't put uh, a ton of paint on. Just just put a thin amount on just to cover the area. a bit on actually. You see it's quite thin. It's 
so that way because it's thin we don't have to worry too much when we're putting the next layer of paint on because when you're doing a, a thin mixture like this you don't need much to lighten it you see you don't waste all your paint this shape yeah I quite like it uh, what I'm thinking though is I've lost some, some of that angleness <laughs> angleness straightness that was there I want that back and then I want this exaggerated here and then I think I prefer that. Do I prefer that? Yes. Yes, I do. I'm going to go into a bit more black. And uh, what I'm going to do is look, thinking about this dark side. <laughs> this is me going on about the dark side again. <laughs> Um, I'm going to put some more black on it because then it uh, makes it a bit more obvious that it's that it is dark. Okay, I like that. And I like this. just wondered what I look like when I'm doing this. <laughs> just had a quick look at the uh, camera and realised that I was way down at the bottom. Ah, uh, a shot. But it matter. Like I was mad. It's not about me, is it? It's about the picture. Okay, so just sitting back, having a look. Do I like what I see? Yes, I do. I think it looks alright so far. Got a nice mountain shape. And, and I'm like desperate to get into do the details. The details. Which is... <laughs> it's the artist flaw, that is. Wanting to throw the details in too soon. You really need to plan things first. Plan things. Plan what you want first and then. Only then you start throwing in the details. But it's easy said. <laughs> Isn't that? I mean ask yourself. How much planning do you do when you do a painting? Do you just get your paints out, put your canvas on and paint? Or do you make little sketches, thinking about what you want? Do you uh, do a little colour study? I mean, what do you do? Or do you look at the reference and go, oh, I like that, I'll have a go at that. <laughs> It's good to think of a process because the process is important. Working things out is important. Are you doing it enough? Do I do it enough? No, I don't think I do. <laughs> I've got this, uh, I mean, I'm trying. I'm trying to be more uh, professional in that matter I'm trying to 
when I design something, I try and go through all the steps. And I've actually been, because uh, I wanted to do some, do my own children's book, and uh, so I've had these ideas for ages. So I joined uh, SVS learn.com and uh, there's loads of classes on there on uh, design and things and it's really interesting and pick some little bits up that you've not thought about and uh, yeah it's really good I'll put a link in the description just in case you wanted to do your own children's book or something you might find it interesting they do like a monthly description, description, <laughs> monthly thing, which I did, because uh, it's cheaper. And then you can view all the courses. Yeah. Yeah. I don't get any kickbacks for promoting them, so. Uh, <laughs> I just thought I'd mention it. So, I'm still looking at my darks and my lights, lights and my darks. And uh, just filling in this area. I'm sat a, a brush length away. No. <laughs> I'm sat more than a brush length away. I'm sat my arm away actually today, yeah. My arm, um, if I pull my, push my arm out, it touches the board. It's not actually, uh, not actually what? <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's an arm length away anyway. <clears throat> it's hard painting and talking. Because your, your mind, or my mind does, it starts going, looking at the picture and uh, this little brain gets activated and it starts thinking, right, what do I need to do, what do I need to do? Look, 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 stare, stare, stare. And then, uh, start having a go. <laughs> Anywho, I quite like this brush, so I'm just going to wipe it on a paper towel, get some of that dark off. And then I'll start. Oh, ice cream van. Oh, well, it's that time of day, so should have expected it. <laughs> Anywho, some yellow ochre, and uh, I'll get a bit brown in there. Yellow ochre and brown. And what we want is this nice colour here. Uh, I don't know if my yellow oak and brown is going to quite do it, but we'll see. Yeah, it's got a little bit of red in it. I might have to get some of that red out. But anyway, let's have a look. Let's put some of this yellow on and we'll start creating shapes on this rock side. Rock face. I'm going to try using downward strokes on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> Doing it on purpose. And the reason is, is this mountain's, you know, it's straight up and down. Like any areas where there's a loop bit like that. And you put in that little uh, loopy bit. Anywhere where it's down. Down strokes, downward strokes. The way to do it. You want to use your brush strokes. That's why painting with oil paint or acrylic paint or whatever, that's what's good about them. You can use your brush strokes. That's the benefit. And I know some people, they, they say, well, I'd rather put in my darks first and some people say I put in my lights first and some people will put in a mid-tone first 
and <laughs> there's no right or wrong way. You've just got to find a way that works for you. I mean, today I looked at it and I thought I want to block it in dark and then I can put light on so then I can have the most fun. <laughs> Living for the highlights. Not the high life, the highlights. <laughs> so, I'm going to get some white and brown. White and brown. And I'm going to use that for my rock. See, I, I can uh, use a little bit of paint and then I can use more if I want to, if I want to make an area lighter or darker. I'm just sort of looking at areas. Um, uh, developing. Developing the skills. <laughs> Might need a bit of brighter grey actually. A bit of black in that. There's a tiny bit of blue in there as well. So what we want to be doing is, as we build this up, we don't want to be, what we don't want to be doing for starters, let's talk about what we don't want. <laughs> um, what we don't want to be doing is getting rid of all this dark, we want to keep some of it. And uh, we also what we don't want to be doing is, I don't want to put my lightest light on yet, uh, that has to be a finale. <laughs> because I enjoy it so much, uh, I have to leave it, otherwise I just put the highlight on and I've finished, so I need something else to put highlights on. <laughs> so you could do this um, realistically if you wished, you use smaller brushes, mix the colours exact, put the colours in the right places. Simple as that. It really is. As simple as that. Oh, bring that bit out of it. I might have to bring a uh, a dark as well into this. quite a lot of uh, highlights and I'm just what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out some that I like so I'm not doing going to do all of them I'm just going to do some that, that makes the shape that I want see that I just went for a sharp color there Gotta sort of think about the light area here. This sort of juts out here, so let's need to have that jutting out. Gonna go into another brush. We use a smaller brush. Get some of the black, a bit of brown and black, just to make a dark. And then what we can do is. Uh, Come in. Darken areas that we need to be darker. So this is the way I like to paint. I, I get start with a, a dark and a light. <laughs> yeah, I start with a dark. I'm not sure why I paused for so long on that. Start with a dark and a light. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
I did start with a dark and a light and, and then once I get into the flow of it I've got my two brushes, I've got my dark and light brush and then I can just start throwing the colours on that I want and change things as I go whichever way I want to like areas that I think well I don't really like the way that is so I just come in with my dark and you can sort of blend areas with the dark and push it into the light areas you can create shapes that wasn't there or have been lost like that maybe you want this area to jut out a bit so you put dark on it because this is your mountain now this isn't the mountain on the picture this is yours so you've got to you've got to take it two hands and develop it the way you want it to be and it, it's a good idea to sit back and have a look is it working the way you want it to be I like this bit there actually I want to create a uh, blink It's my sort of brush, I just want to get that down What I've noticed is, <laughs> if I make the paint go down, it's, it doesn't reflect any light So I can see it a bit better <laughs> no, I'm going into some blue now I'm going to this blue with my dark, I'm not even bother to clean the brown off it because I'm not fussed you see I want a dirty blue anyway yeah when I get some of this quite like that down there it's not like that in the original but I like it so I'm gonna keep it I like using blue on, the, on these because it's a good way of cooling areas down that's it's one of the little painter's tricks make it disappear a bit and I'm, I'm, I'm quite lightly doing it lightly does it as they say who says that? I'm not sure actually <laughs> when I'm uh, listening to myself talking it's almost like there's more of me <laughs> end up having crazy conversations with just me yeah you get the right answers though and if you're wrong then well you know you're both wrong <laughs> Oh dear, I think I'm losing it. Alright, where have we got up to? So, what we've got is an area. Well, starters, both of my brushes have got a bit dark, which isn't good. So, I'm going to lighten it a little bit and I'm going to keep this bluish colour, bluey brown on. I'm going to start fiddling around this area. I might get a little bit of blue. Be nice to have like a an area of dark snow sort of just in here I think in there and then we can bring it outwards like that using brush strokes again like I said and maybe down there as well now you, you look at the picture and you're like, well, there isn't any. You're just making it up. <laughs> and that's right, I am. That's what you want to be doing, you see. You want to be making stuff up. Because when you make stuff up, it becomes more fun. I think it does anyway. Uh, 
Let me have a look. What we need, so I've got a little bit of an issue with this not coming out because it just looks a bit too flat there. I mean, not flat, it looked a little bit of nothingness. So I wanted to join that up a bit. Sort of uh, a little bit of action. It's one way of doing it. You can put paint on both sides of the brush and just, you know, like you're doing a stone and create a load of. Yeah, I'm liking this. I'm just throwing in colour here just to create something that I think is lost. Get some black. Some solid black. I don't think I want this snow here anymore. I don't mind the blue, but I want to sort of jut this out. There. Yeah. Quite like that. I do like that. Right, uh, let's do something with this area here. It's looking a bit boring. Bit of light. Bit of light on there as well. Maybe it comes around like that. See, see what I mean about using the brush strokes. You can create the layer of the land using them, which is what I like. I like it a lot. That's a blue. Yes, blue. Darken that up there. Might do that with all of it and then uh, come back with some lighter colour. It's a good area, isn't it? Blocking it in a bit and then uh, throwing in some light. Just start to reset my camera. So it went a bit funny and realised I didn't have my microphone recording so apologies the sound is coming from the cameras um, hopefully it's not too bad um, what can you do? <laughs> um, disappointing never mind as long as you learn something from the painting that's what matters that's what matters Usually, um, on my game with the microphone, and not so much with the cameras. <laughs> uh, so I just put a little bit of dark in there, just to create a bit of a shape. And put a more in, like that. And then, what I want, maybe... It's okay. Can put a bit of blue in it. And it comes down. There's a bit of light there. Snow. A bit of snow here and there. Maybe there. I quite like the way it is, actually. I don't feel the need to change it too much because all I wanted was that nice mountain area. I like the way it sort of goes along like that. I'm not keen on this bit, I'm going to get rid of that bit. 
might do is put a little rocky area there. Get some of this black. So sort of build up something that sort of juts out. Something like that. And then I can pull a little bit of that in create the shadow of it. And then after I've done that what I usually do is like put a bit more on. Just sort of breaks it off a bit. Otherwise it looks a bit but it doesn't look as good. <laughs> put a bit of dark here as well. Okay. Maybe a bit of dark on that. I can highlight these because I'm a little bit yellow. Just so they're not completely black. Right, I was saying about the highlight, I don't want it to be. Never use the purest white like white straight out of the tube for your highlight <laughs> it'll be too bright in pretty much every painting it never is as bright as that so I've got a bit of yellow and white I'm going to pick out some areas that I want to be bright and I'm not going to use a small brush in this one I'm going to stick with this Them out. Yeah, that's nice, nice and bright there. Some of it, yeah, it, it's sort of mixed as I'm doing it, so I can uh, play around a bit and use some of it that's not quite as bright like so what issue I have there is this is way too bright I'm just going to come over it with a bit of grey thinking it's not quite dark enough down here. That's better. And maybe there's a bit of a, a ray of light down here. There's a bit of light hitting that. Okay, we did it again. Always being careful. Don't want to overdo it. So let's sit back, have a look, have a look at what you've got, maybe a bit of light on that bit there. And you can just sort of play around, uh, do, do whatever you like, you see, whatever you want. You can create whatever you want. 
dropping the brush. Developing areas. Pulling paint out. Doing all sorts. Doing all sorts. Getting a bit of blue and cooling areas down. I thought I was going to need some uh, red to warm things up, but I don't think I need it. I think because of the uh, the, the blue and the, the bits of yellow. I think it works all right as it is. So I think, uh, looking at it, I could add a bit of snow there maybe. But other than that, I think I quite like the way it looks. It's a, a fun, fun way of doing a mountain. If you want to have a go at doing a mountain painting, this is a good way of having a go, creating a mountain, and then you can put whatever you want in it. If you wanted a dragon in the sky, you could do that. If you wanted a warrior coming out of the mountain, which I've kind of made a bit of a gateway, really, in the mountain. When I look at it, I've sort of ended up with a, a gate. It sort of looks like you would come out of the mountain from there. I could even sell that idea a bit more by putting a really dark area there. out of the mountain. <laughs> it is like that. Maybe the dragon's in there. Maybe there's a troll in there. Who knows? But it's up to you. You, you do whatever you want. And uh, create a fun picture that you can uh, develop further. Anyway, my name's Jason and thanks for watching. And I'll see you in another episode. Cheers, bye.